Oh, bump your neighbor, say tonight is my night. Ah, no, 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 bump your other neighbor, tell them tonight is my night. With confidence, let the devil hear you tonight. Say tonight is my night. Breakthrough comes tonight. Freedom comes tonight. Deliverance comes tonight. Acceleration comes tonight. Come on, it comes tonight. It comes tonight. Oh, amen and amen. You may be seated if you can. Are you ready for Jesus? Oh, can I have the, you can leave the house lights for me off, thanks. Uh, are, you, are you ready for Jesus? Are, are you ready for, for more of the King? Are you ready to receive? Oh, you know, as I was standing there, uh, I love Jesus so, so, so much because He never stops talking. He calls Himself the Word, by the way. Oh, come on, where's my hungry people? He calls Himself the Word. Uh, let me get response tonight. If I say something tonight, snatch that. Uh, the Bible says in Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 7, there's a grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's something said tonight, snatch that. If I speak about healing, snatch your healing. If I speak about breakthrough, snatch that breakthrough. Uh, don't let your seat hamper your breakthrough. Amen. Come on. Are, are you with me? Uh, instruct your bum. Say, hey, listen to my breakthrough. <laughs> listen to my breakthrough. I'm serious. Because when he calls you by name, the grave must listen. You know, as I was standing there, I want to speak to you about worship, but I, I, uh, I want to speak to you about how to cancel a, the war of words and how to war prophetically. And, but I, I've learned over many years, I don't come with a plan. I come with God. He's got a plan. Uh, that's the best way. Uh, my responsibility is to put the word inside of me. His responsibility is to take the word out of me. Is that okay? That's what he said. He said, and I will give you unction and I will preach and I will speak. I have an a inclination. If you're hungry enough, we will get into a lot of prophetic words tonight. Um, but uh, that's up to you if you, if you want it. Uh, I don't know. Is there enough hunger, do you think? Oh, come on. Tell, ask your neighbor, are you hungry for more? Do you want more? Listen, uh, this is not hype. This is not anything but a zeal and a fire and a passion for more of God. Uh, we have not... Uh, you know, when you, when you know you are ready for a wonder, is when you're hungry for more of God. When you have become satisfied with the status quo, that's called religion. But when you want more, it's called hunger. When you have hunger, get ready for wonder. Uh, how do I know? Oh, uh, come on. Is there, is there, I have a witness here tonight. My, my brothers and my sisters help me tonight. The Bible says he made his people, Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, he made his people to hunger so that he might produce wonder. So you have to understand your hunger in the, in the, in the natural means you're hungry, you, you can't take more. In the, in the spiritual, your hunger sets you up. I don't know if there's people here that want to be set up tonight. I have a sneaky suspicion. Oh, come and help me tonight that we may minister out of the glory and not out of the anointing. Are you there? Come on, my people. Ah, oh, save me breakthrough. Save me. He knows my name. Oh, no, you have to say that to your other friend next to you. He knows my name. Ah, oh, and there's nothing the devil can do about that if he knows your name. Nothing. I, can I preach prophetically? Is that okay? Um, I, you know me, I, I love the word, so I'm going to preach prophetically. My apologies, I'm not, I might go back to my notes, you never know. Um, but I want to go to the book of John, and uh, the book of John says this. Uh, I'm just paging as if I'm going to read, but I'm teasing. I am actually going to read something. Uh, John chapter number 11. You know, they always say, this person never reads out of the Bible. Listen, the Bible is in me. Uh, are you there? So I can read out of the Bible. I'll show you. Um, but I, I want to speak to you about John chapter number 11. I know the scripture, so can I just preach it um, and throw it at you? It's the book of John chapter number 11. It's when Martha and Mary come to Jesus and they say to Jesus, or they send him a messenger. They say, Lord, the one you love is sick. 
Lord, the one you love is sick. Jesus says this, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Jesus, the one you love, he's sick. Jesus says, don't worry, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. I, I, I need to preach this, how I feel this tonight. Is that okay? I want to get people out of graves. I want to get you out of past situations. I want to get you out of sealed tombs. I want to get you out of a place where the devil has thought it's over. I have authority tonight to tell you it's not over until the king says it's over. Oh, come on. Oh. It's not over. It's not. As long as the king is alive, it's not. <laughs> they, they might beat us, but they will not win us. So in, in John chapter number 11 and uh, Acts chapter number 28 and John 11, they say to Jesus, Jesus, this, your friend is sick. Jesus says the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And you know the rest of the story. Um, you know, you know the rest of the story. Sorry, I'm tugging my shirt so much. You know, these days everything is tight. So uh, I'm trying to not fall out of it. So um, uh, it's a joke. Just relax. But really, um, it's so tight. So I, I think I must not... All these skinny jeans you remember back in the day stuff was like loose now everything is like tight so we need to keep with the uh with the time amen everything is tight i saw a photo of myself the other day with baggy jeans i saw dear jesus what was that no fashion sense amen but now we dress well amen we dress like our future oh no let me try this side we dress like our future <laughs> Oh, okay, so this G stands for God, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm teasing, guys. It's just a joke. It's a joke. I'm, uh, I'm just teasing. I'm playing a few. So they say the sickness is not unto death. Jesus says the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. The messages go back. They say he says the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Three, four days later, dead. Dead. What happened? Jesus, this is Lazarus, the one you love. The one that was your friend, the one that you visited a week before you died. Remember that one? Lazarus, your friend. We know this is the friend of Jesus. Jesus says the sickness not unto death, but for the glory of God. And Jesus stays away four days. And you know the story. I don't, I need, I'm going to just tap into the different scriptures tonight to show you. I want to preach revelation for you tonight. I want to preach revelatory tonight. Is that okay? So sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And please do not go silent tonight on me. I need you to talk back to me. Uh, you can even throw something at me if you want to, uh, but just do something. Amen. Oh, you can, uh, I'm teasing. Um, but <laughs> but uh, can we have some joy in the church? Amen. Come on. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8.10. So we are going through persecution, so we might enjoy it while we're busy going through it. Amen. So anyway, um, the sickness is not unto death for the glory of God. Okay, Jesus, thank you very much. Dead. It seems like a contradiction. Unless God is about to call your name. He waits one day, two days, three days, four days, dead. Why four days? Because according to Jewish uh, tradition, anybody could raise the dead in the first, the second, and the third day. But only God can raise you in the fourth day. Jesus waits four days. He arrives. He says the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. They go back. And what I want you to understand is this. The people put Lazarus into the tomb. They, they leave him there. Uh, they seal up that tomb. Jesus arrives eventually on the fourth day and they have an attitude. Martha goes out to Jesus. You know the story. Martha goes out and says, Lord, if you've been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus says, listen, I am the resurrection and the life. She says, yes, Lord, I know that when you uh, come again or when, when in, the, in that day, in the judgment day, in that you will raise everybody. And Jesus says, no, Martha, I am. Not I'm in the future, I am. I am now. Moses asked God this question in Ex Exodus chapter number 32. He says, who should I say send me? Ego Amy, I am. Okay, God, but I, I, need, I need more information. Who are you? Who should I tell your people you are? He says, tell them I am that I am. Okay, God, but I need more. No, just tell them that. I am their breakthrough. I am their revelation. I am the healing. I am their prosperity. 
I am the provider. I am the victory. I am the Lord their banner. I'm the Lord Jehovah Rapha. I'm the Lord Jehovah Nisi. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Oh, I am that I am. Ego Amy. Jesus says the same. Listen, just, I am. Mary is not there. She's got an attitude like most of us. She's got an attitude. Jesus is late. But he was always late when he wants to do miracles. And that was his style, by the way. Uh, he's late. He always comes late. He was late even to a wedding that he was invited to. Sounds like many of you guys show up late. He, he shows up late. Interesting. He shows up late. But you see with this, when he said this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, he put his voice in front of him. You see, before Lazarus hit that tomb, the voice was already inside that tomb. No, 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 you don't get that. Before you, let me say it like this. Before they seal you up, Jesus is already on the inside. And what they think they are sealing up, they are working alongside God. Oh, they are on God's payroll. Oh, I come as a prophet to you tonight. I want you to know that they are your enemies are on the payroll of God. And they know that. They know that. Visit our website on www.empowerchurch.co.za and become a part of the family that is Empower Church. Once you're on our website, you will have access to some of our latest resources, sermons that have been uploaded, and information about becoming a partner of Empower Church. If you've been impacted by this ministry in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially and help us continue delivering God's Word all around the world. All you have to do is click on the Giving tab and find the giving option that works best for you. Whether you join us online or visit any of our locations, our website is a great starting point to become a part of the move that is Empower Church. That's www.empowerchurch.co.za God knows who we are, creation knows who we are, the devil knows who we are. Only us don't know who we are. So he says the sickness is not unto the devil, for the glory of God, he comes, he stands outside the tomb. But his voice is inside. He says, the sickness is not unto death for the glory of God. And then he says, where is Mary? The word Mary, the name Mary means rebellion. It's the name rebellion. He says, where's Mary? Mary comes out and, and I have a sneaky suspicion there's Mary's here tonight. Mary comes out, she has, she comes to the Lord but in a different way. She comes like Martha, but different. Martha comes to, comes to him like, a, like most of us. She comes by work. She comes by reference. Mary comes to him. Rebellion comes and she falls on her face. She says, Master, same sentence. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus says, show me where I've laid him. Where have you laid my friend? You see, for Martha, he gave the revelation. For Mary, he gives the activation. He says to, and I, and, I'm, and I know I've preached this before, but I, preach it, I want to preach it, I feel it tonight. Because it's, I've long ago learned that he's the CEO of a church. Hmm. He's the senior pastor. I'm the associate pastor to the senior pastor. Amen. Are you there? Are you okay? So he, he says, the sickness is not level for the glory of God. But he stands on the outside. He gives, he gives Martha the revelation. He gives Mary the activation. Because when rebellion bows down to him, he gives activation. He stands outside the tomb. Oh, and that's why I'm saying, I think uh, this is going to get good tonight. I think there's some Marys here tonight. He says, where have you laid him? They say, Lord, uh, they, they take him to the tomb. The tomb is sealed. But you see, what man seals up, God has sealed in. No, let me say that slower. You can put that on Facebook. What man seals up, God has sealed in. Because of God, you don't get something like a tomb. You get a womb. Ah. Oh. Let me say that one more time. That was too good. With God, you don't get a tomb. You get a womb. It's not an ending place. It's a birthplace. When they put Jesus into the tomb, 
it wasn't a tomb. It was a womb to give birth to you. Ah, come on. Oh, does the gospel not excite you? Oh, you know. So, they, it's not a tomb, it's a womb. So, Jesus stands on the outside. He has a witness on the inside. And the Bible says Lazarus' body was there. We know this. I, I, I literally went to the tomb. I know how the tomb looks like. It is impossible to get out of there. Absolutely impossible. Unless you get called by God. I promise you because it's a, it's a, a cave like that. It's got a small entrance like that. Or exit. And then it's up the stairs about four meters before you can get out. It is impossible to get out. Because there's two stones. One on the inside. One on the outside. So Lazarus needed to have help on the inside. That's a revelation to some of you. Come on. Are you with me? Are you hungry tonight in power? How deep do you want to go? Oh, how deep do you want to go? Come on. Oh, okay. So he, he, Jesus has got a witness on the outside. And he stands on the outside. He says, where have you laid him? They take him. They say this. Oh, Lord, it, there's been a stench. He's been dead four days. It's like Jesus didn't know. It's like roll the stone away. And you have to understand, this is what I love about Jesus. He specializes in restoration in front of enemies. He's a specialist. So he says, roll the stone away. They say, oh Lord, there's a stench. You see, Jesus is not afraid of your stench. I'm not afraid of it. He says, roll the stone away. And he says, you know the story. He calls out, Lazarus, come forth. And now you have to understand something here. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the deep. The word hovered there is the Greek word imagination. So the Spirit of the Lord hovered and, and caused the Spirit of God imagined the creation before God spoke the creation. The, imagine, the world that we are walking on was first in the mind of God before it was on the mouth of God. It is interesting that He says to you and I, He puts His words in your mouth. Your breakthrough is in your mouth. Oh. Because there's worlds in your mouth. Your words are worlds. Amen. Come on. Are you, are you there? So Jesus stands on the outside. He says, this. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says that man came out. He didn't walk out. He hopped out. Because the man was bound. He was bound. And he, he came out. Lazarus hopped like a bunny. He came out. And Jesus says this, you people, loose him and let him go. In other words, ask yourself the question, who put him there? Who put him in the grave? People. Who did Jesus use to untie him? People. Oh. In the midst of your enemies, the Lord anoints your head of oil. Psalm 23, 5. And He says, your cup will overflow. Are you, are you with me? It's amazing that the Bible says that when the lady came with the issue of blood, or the lady with the, with the alabaster jar, that when she broke that oil upon Jesus, you have to know something about that lady. She didn't come for a, a quick exchange. She came for a permanent change. She brought all she had to spend it on a man that she heard has got oil too. Because the Bible says, and this is a very interesting story for me, because the book of Mark tells us that Simon was a leper outside. He was a Pharisee. The lady comes in the lady comes in. She walks straight to Jesus. 
It's an interesting fact because everybody in the room knew her. And normally you would not know where a stranger table is unless you've been there before. She walks in, she knows exactly where the table is at. The Bible says that she and Jesus has no discourse. They talk nothing. But she pours all of her oil and everything she has on Jesus. Because she made up her mind. And she said that, and this is, this is the saying, let me paraphrase. I'm tired of trying to apply my oil that makes the stench go away for a little while. But I've heard you have oil too. And your oil, I've heard, cleans from the inside out. And the Bible says there's no words. There's just one word being practiced here. The word for prayer and worship, the word proskuneo. The lady is on her feet with Jesus. And the Bible says they have no discourse. We just have the Pharisee judging. And Jesus says, Simon, he says, yes, master. He said, when I came into your house, you gave me no, no cloth for my head. You didn't wipe my feet. In other words, you didn't even recognize me as a rabbi. Because when you were a rabbi and you would have visited New Testament houses, they needed to, to wipe their feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil. And now I tell you the truth. Now, even though this woman's sins are many, they're many, I will restore her. I will redeem her. Just by, this, is, this is my translation, but I'm filling it in for you. I will make it as if it never happened. And he does an exchange of oil with her. Oh, I don't know if there's people like that here tonight. I think there is. That are ready for an exchange of oil. That have said we are, we are done with our oil. We are done with our own efforts. We want to have your oil, Jesus. Oh, come on. Is there been power? Are you with me tonight? To stay up to date of everything happening here at Empower Church, make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms. That's Facebook and Instagram, at Empower Church Men. To get daily inspirational and motivational posts from Gebert Badent, make sure that you follow him on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram, at Gebert Badent. And for you watching on YouTube, remember to click the subscribe button and you will get notified the moment any of our sermons are uploaded. I'm here on authority to tell you he wants to do an exchange. He wants your oil for his. Jesus hangs on the cross. I said to you, I'm going to jump a couple of scriptures. He hangs on the cross. Just before he goes to the cross, he, he goes for his most pressing time in John 18. Where the Bible says he, he lays in the garden. And by the way, there is your, your Bible is full of of gardens my bible your bible that sounds weird my our bible is full of gardens but he lays in the garden man has forsaken him he's all alone and in this moment of of desperation he calls out not he doesn't call him god he doesn't call him jehovah Calls him, he relates to him as Abba. He says, Abba, Father, my Father, my Father. He calls him Abba. And the Bible says that an angel appears to him and strengthens him. The word strengthen there is the Greek word ichas. And it means to put in divine source of energy, divine source of power, to put in the muscular ability of a thousand men so that he may endure the cross. I'm here to tell you when man walks out and man closes the door and man seals the deal, there is one that opens up the door. There's one that rolls away the stone. There's one that calls you back on your name. There's one that says it is not over until I say it is over. There is one that is 
called the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, Emmanuel, God with us. He does not walk away. He does not leave. He's the one that gives power. Acts 28. The Bible says, I don't know if you even know this, but they, God gave Saul a mission. His mission was to go to Rome. Satan tried to stop everything within his power to make Paul stop. But you see, these two sides of you. I, I'll say this, I love to say this. You are a heavenly and an earthly chromosome. My position is heaven, my location is earth. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, I'm located on the planet. I'm not a citizen of here, I'm a citizen of there. Oh. And I'm not trying to win the battle against the devil. The battle has been won. I'm enforcing a victory. No, no, no. You didn't hear that. I'm not fighting a battle. The battle has been won. We are enforcing a victory. We are enforcing that by His name, every knee shall bow. We are enforcing that devils will flee. We are enforcing that the sick will be raised. We are, we are enforcers of our Father. Because if you mess with me, you mess with my dad. I have to preach it like I feel it. I said to God this afternoon, I said, they're messing with me. Now you mess with them. I didn't anoint me, I didn't choose me, you chose me. You see, when, when you want to get a dad upset, mess with his kids. I don't need to convince him to come onto the sea. I just need to call him. It's like when we were back in primary school, my dad is bigger than your dad. You remember that? It's time that it's Satan believes that again. My dad will whip your dad's back. Every day, every day, twice a day. Oh, come on. Do we get tired? Absolutely. Do we get exhausted? Absolutely. Do we sometimes feel forsaken? Absolutely. Do we feel betrayed? Absolutely. Will we give in? Absolutely not. We can't. We won't. We cannot surrender. So Jesus hangs on this cross. He's hanging on this cross. And it's interesting that man put him there. That is one of the most insulting things we've ever done. Man puts the Creator on the cross. And they think, as I've said, you've got two chromosomes. I can hear one or two of you think. You have a heavenly side and you have an earthly side. On my earthly side, Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem. On my father's side, he walked on the waters. On his earthly side, they put him on the tree. On his mother's side. On his father's side, he came off that tree. On his mother's side, they put him in the grave. On his father's side, he came out of the grave. <laughs> On his mother's side, they thought that's the end of him. On his father's side, that was the beginning. On his mother's side, he said, it is finished. On his father's side, he said, it's just begun. Ah, oh. oh, the devil didn't know. He didn't know because if he knew he's gonna kill Jesus and by Jesus you're gonna sit here tonight he will try to kill everybody that tried to kill Jesus he didn't know the boy is stupid he's got no prophetic insight and I mean that of all the disrespect that I can muster no, I, I'm not afraid of that I tell you why you know people say the other day to me they say you mustn't talk to the devil like that I said why not because they said, but Michael didn't even do that. I said, I said, listen, honey, do I look like an angel? Angels are servants of those that inherited salvation. I do not come against him in my own name. 
I come against him in the name, in the onama, in the name of Jesus Christ. The highest authority in heaven and on earth and under the earth. He has insulted us of sickness. We will insult him of salvation. He has insulted us of affliction. We will insult him by casting devils out. No. We might lose, but not forever. That's for sure. Because he doesn't have time. Time is on my side. Not on the devil's side. You know this, of course. Time is on our side. Time is something that happened because of sin. Sin was, time was not there because before sin happened. Sin is, time is a result of sin. As much as preaching is a result of sin. Because if you knew the master, if we didn't fall, there was no reason for me to preach to you about him. Are you there? And so this lady comes, she breaks everything on Jesus. That's what I love about worshipers. They, they don't have a, like an in-between. They have a 100% approach. They believe that if they point one worship to Jesus, and I'm not preaching to you out of a place where I'm not living this stuff, I'm living it. But I'm, I'm preaching to you tonight prophetically out of a place where I know who I am. As much as you know who you are. And my prayer is tonight, <laughs> that I may provoke you, that you might snatch it for yourself. That you might say, with all that is within you, like Jesus said, he's hanging on this tree. They've, they've confused him with, with Barabbas, because Bar, Bar Abbas, the word Bar Abbas means son of the Father, versus son of God, Jesus. They're standing on the same platform. This is, a, this is a story that should not be, but it is. Jesus, the Son of God. Barabbas, the Son of Man. Son of the Father. They stand next to one another. And the crowd chooses the wrong one. Why? It's called spiritual distortion. They didn't know who they were choosing. But all of this was in the plan. And Jesus hangs on that cross. And this is, this is what I want to get across tonight. This is what he said to me when I stood there. Next to him is a thief. He's guilty. There's two beautiful pictures here. And this is the gospel for me. Barabbas represents most of us. We're guilty. we thugs. we thieves. We shouldn't be the ones that gets used. We are not perfect. We are inheritance of salvation. We have received the gift of salvation. We have received the gift of grace. We have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We receive the gift of God. Everything is a gift. Nothing is based on works. It says the fullness of God's work is this. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Believe. So everything is a gift. We've got it. Buy free. Free. Mahalo. Jesus hangs. Next to him, a thief. And I, I'll, I'll, I want to go deep tonight with this. He, he hangs. The Son of Man hangs. If you ever want to know how much he loves people, this is how much he loves people. He stops dying to save. The man looks at him and says, Remember me. Remember me when you step into paradise. Jesus goes in one up. Jesus says, surely I tell you the truth. Today you will, with, will be with me in paradise. That man was not asking for salvation. He was asking for a thought. But God is awesome in translating thoughts. Because as the lady came in, and I'll put this together for you, the lady comes in. Simon has a thought. 
if Jesus knew what type of woman this is. Jesus answers that thought by not responding to rebuke the woman. He answers the thought by forgiveness. But then he judges the thought. <laughs> you see, when we often come to a place in our lives where we throw in that, you know, there's a saying that you say we throw in the towel. You can't because the master is already thrown in the napkin. The napkin means he's coming back. So you don't have a right to throw in a towel when he has already got the napkin in. What am I saying? I'm saying by while, while he's busy dying, and I'm preaching tonight, uh, I'll get prophetic just now. He, I, he, he's busy dying. The, the, all of hell celebrating. We killed him. They made a miscalculation. Because when he walks into the garden, they say, Jesus says, who are you looking for? They say, Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I am. Your Bible will say, I am he. The original language says, I am. Ego Amy, I am. The same words that he used when he introduced himself to Moses. I am. And the Bible says in the book of John chapter number 18 when he recognized himself who he was. The Bible says the soldiers drew backwards and fell to the ground. If you study that in original language you'll find something. When Jesus told or made a public declaration of who he was. They moved out of him a blast of power. That the Bible says there were two groups of people that came to arrest him that night. It was the officers of the Pharisees and a Roman cohort. A Roman cohort was between three to six hundred people trying to catch Jesus. They were, they were the, the soldiers of the Tower of Antonio. Those were the SWAT team of his day. They were the best of the best. They were the ones that protected the Tower of Antonio. That was the tower that Antonio gave to, um, to uh, what's it, that weird Egypt lady? Um, Cleopatra. So that was the fight. He gives them the best of the best. The SWAT team arrives. They come with lanterns and weapons and torches. The Bible says, the historians tells us that when they came to raise Jesus that night, it was so many people that arrived that it seemed like the whole of Jerusalem got lit up. They come into a garden to arrest one man. Now, why will you send so many people if you're not a believer in His power? No, 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 no. Let me try this side. Why will you send so many people if you are not a believer in His power? So he says, Ego Amy. The Bible says there were two groups, the, the soldiers of the Tower of Antonio and the officers of the Pharisees. The officers of the Pharisees were the people that walked the people to the crosses. They were the deaf row people. These were hard men. They all came to arrest Jesus. Now here's the picture. I want you to understand this. I'm going to get you shouting just now. I want you to understand this. Jesus says, I am. A blast of power leaves him. The Bible says the soldiers, they start to stagger backwards. And they fall to the ground. What it means in the original language is this. That when he said, I am. Power leaves him. It hits them. It picks them into the air. It throws them backwards. Now you have all the men of war. You have, sold, you have swords, you have torches, you have weapons. Lying everywhere. And the Son of Man stands in the midst of them. And He waits for them to get up. That's what happened. The Bible says, they ask Him again. Most likely a bit more wisely now because you're only stupid if you ask that twice oh, come on are you are you with me oh, I don't mean sorry I mustn't say the word stupid that's unbiblical I'll use the word moron that's biblical 
Because the Bible says, the foolish, the weak, the base get saved. The word foolish is the Greek word morenos. There's a word in there. Come on, I don't mean to insult you, but that's what the Bible calls it. Do you know there's three types of people God saves? The foolish, the base, the weak. The word foolish is the Greek word morenos, moron. The word base means ugly. I tell you the truth, go study the original text. The word weak means people that can't help themselves. So now he uses the ugly, the morons, and the ones that can't help themselves. Why does he use this group of people? Because we are perfect vessels of power. Because when he does use us, and people can only look at them at us and say, where do they get this power? Where do they get this might? Where do they get the strength? Where do they get this dignity? Ah, oh, okay. Listen, I mean no offense, so don't be offended. Okay, tell your neighbor, don't be offended. Don't be offended. I'm not, I don't mean to insult. You know, people say, you know, anyway, so let me just go. The word offense, by the way, is a Greek word, scandalizo, and that means to climb into your own prison, lock it from the inside. It's true. The word scandalizo means like a bird, go into a cage, lock the cage, and sit inside the cage. That's the word offense. Now we hear this word in the church a lot. I was offended. Oh, so you mean you climbed in your own prison and locked it from the inside? Yeah. Oh, that sounds very clever. No, they offended me. No, 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 no. You put yourself in prison. Because how can you offend a dead man? Oh, we Christians, we funny. Oh, I'm offended. How can you be a dead? Dead man, be offended. He's dead. Dead man, you're ugly. He can't be. He's dead. He calls you dead. Why? That he can live through you. Oh, come on, Christians. Too many Christians these days are like, oh, I'm going to lose my reputation. That doesn't really, he doesn't matter. He doesn't really care. He lost his. So who are we to have a reputation? <laughs> Come on. Reputation actually means you have, a, you have an accolation. In other words, the word reputation, if you, put, if you study this again, the word reputation means you've achieved something. But there's nothing we've achieved. So what can we lose? That's ours. You can't lose a gift. It's given to you. If you lose it, ask for another one. He's the, he's the father of heavenly lights. He's the giver of gifts. God lose it. He'll give you another one. Okay, let me go. So, I said to you, it's a miscalculation. It is a miscalculation. Because now he stands. They come. They arrest him. He says nothing. Peter tries to hit Malchus' head off not his ear he tries to chop a head off by the way that's how many of you feel you don't chop ears you chop heads yeah i know i know how that feels so he swings for a head he gets in here jesus fixes his mess oh that's a sermon all by itself and then he walks silently he's silent he doesn't say nothing they take him to Caiaphas and Ananias. They pluck out his beard. He says nothing. They slap him through the face. The Bible says when they slapped him, they slapped him with a sting. When you study how many men there were, there was at least 120 men slapping him through his face. He says nothing. They spit in him. His face, he says nothing. They take him in front of Pontius Pilate. He does not defend himself. Pontius Pilate wants to set him free. He says, you will not have authority unless I gave it to you. He stands in front of Pontius Pilate. He puts him on the cross. He scourges him, which was called in New Testament times, was called the first death. He doesn't die. He makes the scourging. They take him to the cross. He hangs there. He waits. The Father now puts the sins of the world, past, present, future upon him. 
it's the first time in your Bible that he will call God Father. It's the first time, no apologies, the first time he will call the Father God. All the other times he related to him as Father. But when he hangs on the cross, he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Why does he call him God? Because in that moment, he's not relating to him as father. He's relating to him as the one that judges all sins past, present, future. You don't have a right to hold on to your sins. You don't have a right to call yourself by your sin. And you don't have a right to let other people call you by your sin. God, does, God knows your sin, but He calls you by your name. The devil knows your sin and calls you by it. God calls you by name. He's silent. He hangs. So uh, you can, You're going to shout now, I promise you. He says, suddenly he looks up. I've seen this in visions. He looks up. He says, it is Tetelestai. They are busy parting in hell. He's dead. But I think one of the enemy must have said, what is finished? What is done? What did he just finish? And let me tell you how I see it. I think while they're having a party, they hear the footsteps of the one. Because the Bible says he walked in the cool of the day and Adam and Eve knew him by his footsteps. So now while they're throwing a party, they hear the footsteps. Ah, that's what I love about Jesus. He, <laughs> he bashes open the door. Pa. He's like, walks over to the devil. He says, give me the keys of hell, hate, and the grave. Listen, the devil has been so defeated that he doesn't even have the keys of his own house. Oh no, let me say that again. The devil has been so defeated that he doesn't even have the keys to his own house. Jesus has the keys. Oh, Satro Boshere, he has the keys. He has the keys of sickness. He has the keys of death. He has the keys over your life. Satan will not have the final say. I tell you the truth. Oh, shout in power. Do something. He doesn't have the keys. When I prayed this afternoon, he said that to me. He says the devil doesn't have the keys to his own house. I shouted. I'm like, oh, I never saw that. He said, my boy, he doesn't have the keys. He doesn't have the keys. I said, so he doesn't know who's going to come in and come out? Absolutely. He doesn't have the keys, my boy. I can take anybody out. He doesn't have the keys. I'm here to tell you he doesn't have the keys. You might be 65 year old, 66, 67, and not have a work. The devil doesn't have that say. No. Oh. You might sit here tonight with a doctor's report of your life that says terminally ill. The devil doesn't have that say. He does not have that say. You have the say in Jesus. Oh, oh believe with me tonight. Oh, make a sound of me tonight that we might believe in the Lord our God. That we might believe. And we might say, greater is he that you've been me than he that you've been the world. Greater is he that has called me by name. I am royalty. You are royalty. We are called kings and priests. Revelations 1.5.
I'm more than a conqueror. Who can cost? Oh, so I'm more than a conqueror. I will win this fight. You will win this fight. We have to believe. We have to believe. We are fighting. Sometimes the fight grows grows heavy, but it doesn't mean we will lose this. We won't lose. We can't lose. The devil doesn't have the keys. He doesn't have the keys. That means that boy needs to sleep with his eyes open. Because you never know. He never knows when the next Christian will come bashing in. We are called Christians, Christ-like. That means we bash the door open. And we say, no. Oh, come on. Do I have a witness in the building tonight? That pushes down the door and say, hell no, devil. We have to believe. We have no option. I tell you the truth, we have no option. We must trust. We must have faith. This afternoon I was, I was, after church I was, and let me not tell you that, let me tell you this. He calls himself, I am. You see, when Jesus, when a blast of power left him, he rose a young man out of the grave. Because the Bible says a naked young boy came into fleet running into their midst, dressed with an Egyptian ephod. An ephod was a burial shroud. That means that a rich young boy called Marcus was just buried. But when Jesus said who he was, there was so much power that left him. There was a resurrection by mistake. And the last thing that the Romans, the Bible says the Roman soldiers tried to catch Marcus, the naked boy. Because the last thing they needed was another resurrection. He rose Lazarus from the dead. That should have been an indication. He rose Marcus from the dead. That should have been an indication. That's why I tell you, they have miscalculated this thing. They have put a doctor's report over your life. That's a miscalculation. They have put an unbelief over your life. That is a miscalculation. Oh. The Bible calls the devil a, a, the author of confusion. That means he's confused. You know how you confuse him? By worshiping when you should mow by praising <laughs> oh i know what i'm talking about i know what i'm talking about. i have lived i'm living it currently as i'm standing in front of you it's one thing that happens when you throw a man that has a mission i said to my wife she, she you know we she's praying i said i said there's one thing and that's what i wanted to say in acts 28 do you know in Acts 28, when they throw Paul into the water, do you know that the, the waters that Paul fell in, according to, and again, you, might, oh, you got the guys, there's so much in the word. You must just study it. It was, it was known that in that area, if you fell in there, it was finished. But Paul swims out. Now, the people of the island, they were snake worshippers. Snake bites Paul. He... You shake off an attack. Oh, come on. Do I have a witness in the building? Okay. 
Let me say this. I've got one scripture that I'll have on my PowerPoint. 1 Kings 19.9. And I'll end of this. In the next 45 minutes. Okay, 1 Kings 19.9. I always say I end, I never end. You know, my, my multimedia team, these people have got faith. Because they believe I can read that. But I can. Let me just stand still and be spiritual for a moment. I'm going to make as if. <laughs> this morning they put it like that small. I was like, Jesus. I was like squinting and people were looking at me weird. Like, I did, very pastor. Uh, 1 Kings 19.9. It says this. Jesus, God for asking Elijah. What are you doing here? Elijah. This was just after he got attacked by Jezebel. He stands at the mouth of the cave, dressed in his cloak. And the Bible says he thinks God's come in the storm. He thinks God comes in the, in the, in the, in the rain. He thinks God comes in the wind. God comes in nothing of that. Until the prophet dresses himself in his cloak. His cloak was a representative of his identity. It is not until the prophet dresses himself in his identity that the voice comes to him. And there's something we've always misinterpreted in the Bible. I want to show you something. When Elijah took double, Elisha from Elijah took double. Um, let me show you quickly something. Uh, can I have more Bibles? Do you have, I need like three Bibles or phones. Just give me something. Okay, here my go. Uh, I see these, these Christians, they don't have Bibles. Okay, there's four. I want to show you something. When Elisha wanted double, you have been educated, that means double of the man. It's not what it means. The word double there means a selection of the portions that Elijah carries. In other words, Elisha could ask for the best of what Elijah carried. So if Eric, like, if Eric was Elijah, just hold it. It's heavy. And I was Elisha. Elisha by servanthood, by honor, could select the two best ones and leave the others of Elijah. What were the ones he selected? Elijah carried provision. Elisha carried healing. Elisha took healing and, thank you, took healing and prosperity. Now listen to me. When Jesus came, there was a man that had the spirit of Elijah. Oh, I've got so much energy tonight. The, the book, the Bible says, Lord, deliver us from evil. The word evil is the Greek word ponderos. The word ponderos means poverty and pain. Within the mantle of Jesus is paid. No, 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 you don't let me try this. Out. Within the mantle of Jesus, he has paid by blood for all the pain and the poverty everything is under the blood it's under the blood it's paid for when you ask for your healing he will say paid for when you ask for your breakthrough he says paid for when you ask for deliverance he says paid for when you ask for to be used by god he says paid for when you say lord heal me he says paid for Paid in full. 
The only thing you have to do. Oh, and that's why empower. You are blessed people. I can say this with no disrespect. Jesus needed to locate John to open up the heavens. He stands in a queue. Jesus. Like all the other people. And he waits for the prophet. The Bible says, believe in God's prophets and you will prosper. He goes and waits. Why does he wait? Because God, oh, can I just preach for another 10 minutes, please? I've been born to preach. So, he, God should have given that mantle to Gehazi. Because God is the God of Abraham, of Abraham Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, Elisha. Gehazi. Gehazi is not found worthy to carry the mantle. The mantle goes to John. John arrives on the scene. He's standing in front of Jesus, his cousin. His cousin. He knew him from growing up. This was the man that ran of him in the streets. He goes, Jesus has no sin in his life. Nothing. The man is sinless. He goes, he stands in queue. Oh, you have to understand that what you disrespect, you can never partake of. I, tell, I can tell you and I tell my spiritual sons, if you dis disrespect me, you will never partake what I carry. Mm, you can't. You can't. It's impossible. Because Jesus stands in the queue. The Bible says, John says to him, listen, I can't baptize you. Jesus answers John. He says, John, you have to. Do this now that all matters of righteousness may be fulfilled. John says, okay. He baptizes him. He puts him under the water. The two prophets are obedient. John, the prophet, sent us to voice Jesus the messenger sent by God to tell the world he is not angry but he came to save two prophets old dispensation new dispensation and by the way when John says Lord may I decrease that's an Old Testament prayer because the next time you hear that type of prayer, it's Jesus speaking. He says, Lord, increase them. That they may do greater works. You see, we have, we have become confused with humiliation and humility. Ah, oh, Two dispensational prophets. Jesus submits. Because you can't say you submit to God if you can't submit to man. It's impossible. He submits. God submits as a man to a man that carries God. Let me say it again slowly. God in a man submits to God upon another man. He establishes two witnesses. The heavens go open. And the 400 years of silence gets broken. Between Malachi and Matthew, 400 years of silence gets broken. The moment there's two sons back on the planet in agreement once again with the father's plans oh are you hearing what i'm saying as you sit here tonight if you find one person in this crowd that agrees with what god told you one one just one the father will come and will make his home with you just one not five not ten not twenty one he needs two by two we can take a city 
Oh, come on, is there a... Two. Just two, he needs two. I'm here as his witness tonight to tell you. I don't know what you're facing, but I'm standing outside the cave with you. And he's calling your name. And he is saying, come out. <laughs> he's saying, that sickness, no, 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 come out. He's saying, that poverty, no, 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 no. Come out. Yeah, but I don't feel qualified. That's okay. He qualifies the unqualified. You might say, oh, but I messed up. Uh, well, tell Paul that. Paul says, oh, I'll really end. That's why I say to you, it's always 45 minutes when I say it's going to end. Paul says, Paul, the murderer Paul. Ah, oh, keep on standing, please. The murderer Paul. The thief Paul. Paul says, we have harmed no man. Harm no man. But Paul, you killed Stephen. We harm nobody. Then Paul says this in the book of Corinthians. We have blasphemed no one. But Paul, you blaspheme God. Ah, oh, but then Paul says this. Two secrets. I am a new creation. The former things I remember no more. For the old has gone. The new has come. Oh, come on. What does that mean? It means uh, you might sit here tonight and the devil wants to call you by your sin. You must say, I don't know that person. Paul was like this. Oh, Saul, I, I don't know the guy. I don't know Saul. I know Paul. No, 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 but Saul. No, I don't know Saul. I know Paul. Oh, oh, but remember Simon. No, no, no. I don't remember Simon. I know Peter. Remember the prostitute Mary? No, 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 no. I just know the worshiper one. Oh, Lazarus, remember how you were afraid when you died? Yeah, I don't remember. I'm alive now and I like to be alive. Yeah, there's two sides of you. Oh, come on, you better believe that. Oh, but oh, we remember when you were Joseph's son. No, I'm not Joseph's son anymore, my friend. I'm the Messiah. You see, that was the miscalculation, Luke 4. They thought it's Joseph's boy. No, it wasn't. It was God's boy. Come on, are you, are you there? Are you with me? So I had a good thought now and left me. It was good. Uh, I'll get it now. It was good. I wanted to say something now. But there's always two sides of the coin. You see, uh, the Bible says this. Uh, let me throw that up. Uh, Philippians. I'm just recording scripture here. Philippians 1.7. I think it's one, one six. Partakers of my grace. I think it's one six. One six. No seven. Yeah. Oh, that's why you must know the Bible. Listen to that. Uh, can you give me the NIV? No, no, that's fine. Leave it like that. It reads it right. I, I like my Bible in the Greek, but I'll read it. The last bit says, "You are all partakers with me of grace." Grace is a gift. It's a gift. Now, uh, can you go to John 1.12? I think it's 1.12 or 117. Where grace and truth was found in Jesus Christ. I think it's 17. 17. Oh, all these years of reading the Bible like a crazy person is praying. For the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ listen mm. 
Can I, can I put those two scriptures for you together? Whatever grace you see in my life, you know how you partake of this? You understand. You access grace. Oh, we think we must work for grace. No. You access grace by, by recognizing grace. Let me use an example. A year or two or three ago, my father was here, my spiritual father. And when I gave him his, a gift for him, I bowed on the stage. And people had a problem with bowing. I was like, listen, he's not a God. They said, but why do you bow? I'm practicing my level. I have a lesser grace. And for me to take a partake of his, I can only access his by honor. So what people misrepresent is actually me understanding I'm exercising my level. Because whatever I disrespect, I can't partake of. Oh. They disrespected Jesus. He couldn't give them salvation. But whoever, the Bible says this, John 1. I'm done now. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And He came to His own. But His own received him not then the most awesome transition words in your bible therefore whosoever <laughs> believes in his name you see god came to the jews they said no thank you he said okay i'm going to the gentiles and here we are <laughs> here we are here we are saying yes to the call saying yes to the call we have said yes to the call of 2019 years ago yes 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 we have said yes one more scripture 2 corinthians 1 20. 2 corinthians 1 20 please Get ready for pro the prophetic. I'm going to prophesy. For all the promises of God, not some, all of the promises of God in Him mm, are yes. And now I like this. The, the, uh, the Spirit of God starts to say amen to His own preaching. Oh, yes, and in Him. Amen. Oh, you need to know. Well, when the Spirit says amen to His own preaching, that means what He promises, He will not fail. In Him, yes, and amen. To the glory of God. Oh, let me answer, let me translate that to you. That means He wants to say yes to Himself. So that he might get his glory back. So every time he doesn't say yes, he's not getting his glory. Uh, one more scripture, John 17, 22. Sotro boshtere biatra, zabri andro boshtere. And the glory, and the glory, save me glory, which He gave me, I have given them. So you never have the right to say again, God, you get your glory. He has already has His. He has given His glory to you. You see, there's such a false doctrine in the church. We say, oh, no, I don't want His glory. No, you're not that good. Oh, no. Or people come to us and say, oh, you sounded like Jesus. No, 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 no. It wasn't that good. 
I'm teasing. And the glory which He gave me, I have given them. That they may be one as we are one. Uh, let, me, let me say this. God gave you what Satan lusted after. In Isaiah chapter number 14, Satan wants to make his throne above God's throne to receive glory because his name means phosphorus, one that, ref that reflects glory. So what Satan wanted, God gave. The devil wanted the glory. Oh, in this church we preach long. The devil wanted the glory. You know why I'm preaching long, by the way? I'm exercising your spiritual muscles. I'm seeing how much you can take. I, I, I know, I don't even tell you what I'm doing, but I'm exercising you. Because soon I can preach three hours, you'll be able to take it. Four hours, you'll be able to take it. Five hours. Never follow a leader that pre preaches for like 20 minutes and that's all that he has. No, don't follow that person. They don't have nothing to say. Follow a man that can't stop talking. I'm teasing, but it's true. The guy says my three points. No, 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 no don't follow that. Follow a person that says, and I'm ridiculing nobody, but follow people that are full of the word. Mm. Let me give you one more scripture. Colossians 3.15, I'll end of, really end of this. Just one. Do you love the word? Uh, let me prove to you what I've said is true. Colossians 3.15. Brethren. No, uh, Colossians, not Galatians. We don't want to go back to the law now. Colossians 3.15 Let the, it should say, let the peace of God rule your heart. Yeah. And let the peace of God rule your heart to which you are called and in one body be thankful. Verse 16 Let the word of Christ dwell. The word dwell is the word mino which means overflow now listen go back to john 1 in the beginning was the word oh, just don't worry i'll quote it for you in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was with god and the word came to dwell you know what the word dwell means it means to walk around So I don't have Jesus with me in the sense that he's sitting next to the Father and the next time he's going to move there, the devil's going to run. Where's my Bible? But what I do have is the living word. And it's my responsibility to put this book inside of me because it's living and active, Hebrews 4.12. And as much as I put it inside of me, I get to learn more about my master. And then the devil can't say something about me, him that's not in here. Because they will, then the devil will say, Ah, oh, see, the sickness is unto death. But then I'm like, Uh uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Isaiah 55, 53, 5 says, By his stripes we are healed. And then I get afraid because I'm pushed on every side. But then I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says this, I have not received the spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. Then I feel I get pressed against the, the ropes. I want to give in. I want to give up. But then I remember he said, all things work together for those that are called by his name. Then I feel when the call on my life gets too heavy and I want to run away, I remember Philippians 1, 6, whatever I have called, I will finish.
Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. We want to encourage you to become a part of all our other live streams in the run of the week. That's Sunday morning, Sunday evening, as well as during our Tuesday service. Become a part of the movement that is in power. Follow us on all our social media platforms. That's Facebook and Instagram. And when you're there, just search for Empowered Church Made. If you've missed this sermon or you want to listen to it again or another sermon you've missed earlier, for your convenience, all our messages are uploaded online. Just go to YouTube and search for Empowered Church, click the subscribe button and make sure that you get notified the moment we upload any of our sermons. You're also welcome to get the audio podcast on Podcast for Apple or Podbean for Android. And on both of them, all you do is search for Empowered Church and click the subscribe button to make sure you get notified. We want to hear about how the Lord is impacting your life, how this ministry is changing your life, and how the Lord is answering your prayers. Because our answered prayer for you is a celebration for us. You're welcome to send that to us by email to testimony at empowerchurch.co.za because this is a hometown victory. If you've been impacted by this ministry in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially and help us continue delivering God's Word all around the world. You can do this by visiting www.empowerchurch.co.za and find the giving option that suits you best. Thank you so much for joining us. Now go and live the empowered life. Music